this is Kirsten, and she doesn't know how to play the violin, but she does understand physics, so we have to teach her how to play with both resonance and friction. First, how does a violin even work? Well, every object has a natural frequency that it vibrates at, and as musicians, our job is to manipulate these frequencies. The wavelength of these frequencies are called standing waves. For example, if you have a piece of string and you pluck it from one end to the other, it'll make an arc, and then once it hits the, um, the barrier, it'll go back reflected, and that's how standing waves are created. Different wavelengths are determined by density, the tension, and the length of the string, which is why we have different sounds. The two objects have the same natural frequency. They amplify their sound when played together. This is called resonance. So if the string of the violin is playing, the body of the instrument resonates with the string, amplifying the sound. Another example of resonance is if you play G on the D string, then the open G string will vibrate as well because it resonates with the note above it. How does this translate into actually playing? Well, resonance is what amplifies the sound, but like other string instruments, the violin uses the bow, and the friction from the bow is what actually causes the sound to be made. Violinists use bows made of horsehair that have tiny scales on them that grip the string and increase friction until it slips away and finally creates noise. There's one important thing with the violin that is rosin. Rosin's used and you put it on the bow hair to increase the friction that the bow has on the string. And so if we're using a bow like this one that doesn't have any rosin on the horsehair, it sounds like this. Alternatively, if we use a bow that does have bow hair, like my own, you have... And so the friction of the rosin increases the sound that the strings are able to make. This phenomenon is best explained as slipstick friction, which is what gives the violin its noise. Slipstick friction is similar to what we learned about in class with the increasing of applied force, causing the friction forces to reach max static friction before releasing into kinetic. How do you use this to change your sound? Well, if you want to play with a more aggressive sound, you want a heavier bow with more bow speed. And if you want a lighter sound, then use less weight and you need to have a very fast bow. So, let's see if all of this knowledge stuck in her head or if it all slipped out. <laughs>